Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 347. Though mountains may depart from thee, and hills be far removed, his kindness shall remain with thee, his covenant be proved. Hymn number 347. The scriptural will now be read by Suzanne from Vermont. I shall read from 1 John. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 86. God's glory is a wondrous thing, most strange in all its ways, and of all things on earth, least like what men agree to praise. Hymn number 86.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And I don't know how they get better, but they just keep getting better. We had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you'll also find it on our YouTube channel if you prefer that. We have a Sunday school for children that meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. And that Sunday school is available for children anywhere in the world. It has its own teleconference number. So if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, please call us. We'll give you the number, and we'd be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives literally saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery available for the infants and toddlers, so bring the whole family. Um, we had a really good Bible study yesterday, so we will not have one this coming Saturday. The next one will be in two weeks. So check the website for the Bible study questions, and please join us in two weeks, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. And we've been printing and mailing again. There, our magazine, Love is the Liberator, was printed and mailed this week to subscribers. And it is also available on our website. And it's really good. So be sure to get one and, and read it. And for those of you in Plainfield here, be sure you get your next quarterly after the service today and or your October Full Text Lesson Sermon Booklet. Next month is October and the fourth quarter. And there's a really good article I'd like to highlight that's mentioned on our website, on the cover of our website, um, entitled Body by Martha Wilcox. Very good explanation as to the relationship between your body and your thinking. So, so be sure to read it. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony from Miscellaneous Writings which attests the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Pam from Virginia. Page 450 to 451. I take advantage of the great privilege granted us to give my testimony for Christian Science through the pages of our much-loved journal. The blessing has been so bountiful that words can but poorly express my gratitude. A little over six years ago, a relative came from Denver, Colorado to visit us. She was a Christian scientist, having herself been healed of a severe claim that MDs, drugs, and climate could not relieve. And her husband, having been in the drug business, she had had a chance to give them a fair trial. My sister-in-law did not talk, talk much on the subject, as I remember, but what was better, live the truth before us as she realized it. One day, a blessed day to me, I ventured to open Science and Health and read the first sentence in the preface. I closed the book wondering what more it could contain, this seeming to cover the whole ground. When my sister-in-law returned to the room, I asked her if I might read it. Her reply was, yes, but begin at the first. That night, after all had retired, I began to read. Within 48 hours, I destroyed all drugs, applications, and so forth. 
notwithstanding the fact that my husband had just paid $50 to a traveling specialist for part of a treatment. With the drugs disappeared, ailments of nine years standing, which MDs had failed to relieve, I now understand that my sudden healing was due to my turning completely away from material methods, for I was convinced I should never use them again. I realized that God was my health, my strength, my life, therefore all. As I read Science and Health, I wondered why others had not discerned this truth. Physicians, ministers, and others who had devoted their lives to benefit mankind. Yes, why? Because they had been seeking in the opposite direction to truth, namely for cause and effect in matter, when all cause and effect are mental. I mention physicians and ministers because one class claims to heal disease, the other claims to heal sins. But Christian science heals physically and morally. It contains all. Its leaves are for the healing of the nation. LBA, Memphis, Tennessee. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 26 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Reality. The Golden Text, John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The Responsive Reading, Psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an ant host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidst, See ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Florence will now read. I will read from the Bible, Genesis. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. 
In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Ecclesiastes. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but this have sought out many inventions. Luke. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and led him down through the tiling with his couch into the mist before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto the man, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, 
and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And he said unto them, Seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Isaiah, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Bruce will now read. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. There is but one way to heaven, harmony, and Christ in divine science shows us this way. It is to know no other reality, to have no other consciousness of life than good, God, and His reflection, and to rise superior to the so-called pain and pleasure of the senses. Reality is spiritual, harmonious, immutable, immortal, divine, eternal. Nothing unspiritual can be real, harmonious, or eternal. Sin, sickness, and mortality are the suppositional antipodes of spirit and must be contradictions of reality. In the Gospel of John, it is declared that all things were made through the Word of God, and without Him, the Logos, or Word, was not anything made that was made. Everything good or worthy God made. Whatever is valueless or baneful, He did not make. Hence, it's unreality. In the science of Genesis, we read that He saw everything which He had made, and behold, it was very good. Sin, sickness, and death must be deemed as devoid of reality as they are of good, God. Reason, rightly directed, serves to correct the errors of corporeal sense. 
But sin, sickness, and death will seem real, even as the experiences of the sleeping dream seem real, until the science of man's eternal harmony breaks their illusion with the unbroken reality of scientific being. Which of these two theories concerning man are you ready to accept? One is the mortal testimony, changing, dying, unreal. The other is the eternal and real evidence, bearing truth's signet, its lap piled high with immortal fruits. Would a mother say to her child, who is frightened at imaginary ghosts and sick in consequence of the fear, I know that ghosts are real, they exist and are to be feared, but you must not be afraid of them. Children, like adults, ought to fear a reality which can harm them and which they do not understand, for at any moment they may become its helpless victims. But instead of increasing children's fears by declaring ghosts to be real, merciless, and powerful, thus watering the very roots of childish timidity, children should be assured that their fears are groundless, that ghosts are not realities, but traditional beliefs, erroneous and man-made. The Christianly scientific real is the sensuous unreal. Sin, disease, whatever seems real to material sense, is unreal in divine science. The physical senses and science have ever been antagonistic, and they will so continue till the testimony of the physical senses yields entirely to Christian science. The age has not wholly outlived the sense of ghostly beliefs it still holds them, more or less. Time has not yet reached eternity, immortality, complete reality. All the real is eternal. Perfection underlies reality. Without perfection, nothing is wholly real. All things will continue to disappear until perfection appears and reality is reached. We must give up the spectral at all points. We must not continue to admit the somethingness of superstition, but we must yield up all belief in it and be wise. When we learn that error is not real, we shall be ready for progress, forgetting those things which are behind. It is vain to speak dishonestly of divine science, which destroys all discord, when you can demonstrate the actuality of science. It is unwise to doubt if reality is in perfect harmony with God, divine principle, if science, when understood and demonstrated, will destroy all discord, since you admit 
that God is omnipotent. For from this premise, it follows that good and its sweet concords have all power. All reality is in God and his creation, harmonious and eternal. That which he creates is good, and he makes all that is made. Therefore, the only reality of sin, sickness, or death is the awful fact that unrealities seem real to human erring belief until God strips off their disguise. They are not true because they are not of God. We learn in Christian science that all in harmony of mortal mind or body is illusion, possessing neither reality nor identity, though seeming to be real and identical. You command the situation if you understand that mortal existence is a state of self-deception and not the truth of being. Mortal mind is constantly producing on mortal body the results of false opinions, and it will continue to do so until mortal error is deprived of its imaginary powers by truth, which sweeps away the gossamer web of mortal illusion. The most Christian state is one of rectitude and spiritual understanding, and this is best adapted for healing the sick. When the illusion of sickness or sin tempts you, cling steadfastly to God and His idea. Allow nothing but His likeness to abide in your thought. Let neither fear nor doubt overshadow your clear sense and calm trust that the recognition of life harmonious, as life eternally is, can destroy any painful sense of or belief in that which life is not. Let Christian science, instead of corporeal sense, support your understanding of being. And this understanding will supplant error with truth, replace mortality with immortality, and silence discord with harmony. The Bible declares, All things were made by Him, the divine Word. And without him was not anything made that was made. This is the eternal verity of divine science. If sin, sickness, and death were understood as nothingness, they would disappear. As vapor melts before the sun, so evil would vanish before the reality of good. One must hide the other. How important, then, to choose good as the reality. Man is tributary to God, spirit, and to nothing else. God's being is infinity freedom, harmony, and boundless bliss. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty.
Like the archpriests of yore, man is free to enter into the holiest, the realm of God. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 206. O God, our Father, Mother, love, purge thou our hearts from sin, that in thy radiancy divine we may with eyes undimmed define thy will, reality. Hymn number 206.
Let's now sing hymn number 85. God of truth, eternal good, lift our hearts to revelation that thou mayest be understood 
thou the rock of our salvation. All thy love we have for loving. All thy truth is ours for proving. Hymn number 85. Christian Science Textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the Corella Passages from 1 John, 3rd Chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. John. 
It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Amen.